to this uh, seventh Sunday of Easter service. I'm glad that uh, you can join me again from your home. The weather is getting uh, better and I hope you have a chance to enjoy the sunshine. Let us gather ourselves into worship. Let us hear from Psalm 68, a psalm of David. May God arise, may his enemies be scattered, may his foes flee before him. As smoke is blown away by the wind, may you blow them away as wax melts before the fire, may the wicked perish before God. But may the righteous be glad and rejoice before God, and may they be happy and joyful. Sing to God, sing praise to his name, extol him who rides on the crowd. His name is the Lord, and rejoice before him. A father for the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in his holy dwelling. God sets the lonely in families. He leads forth the prisoners with singing, but the rebellious Life is in a sun scorched land. When you went out before your people, O God, when you march through the wasteland, the earth shook. The heavens poured down rain. Before God, the one of Sinai. Before God, the God of Israel. You gave abundant shower, O God. You refresh your weary inheritance. Your people settle in. And from your bounty, O God, you provided for the poor. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing the praise to the Lord, to him who rides the ancient skies above, who thunders with mighty voice, proclaim the power of God, whose majesty is over Israel, whose power is in the sky. You are awesome, O God, in your sanctuary. The God of Israel gives the power and strength to his people. Praise be to God. Amen. Amen. My friend, join me to the call to the call to worship that you have in front of you. Let us come to worship together. Faith may not be looking up, but looking out. Faith may not be knowing answers, but asking questions. Faith may not be judging righteousness, but loving the fearful. Faith may not be doctrine memorized, but risk taking. Friend, let us entrust ourselves to faith in God. Let us worship. Let's come together in the opening prayer. Join me into that. You do have the text with you. Let us pray together. Lord our God, you have raised your Son to be with you, and we sing to you in joy. Send us your Holy Spirit as he has promised to free all people from hatred and from fear, to be our advocates and our counselor. And so give us the peace of Christ as we worship this morning. 
Amen. Our first hymn is a hymn that you, you know very well and one that you, you like. Blessed Assurance in Voices United 337. sometimes broken. So let us uh, use this opportunity to lay down before the throne of our God our burdens, things that are inside us. Let us uh, join into the prayer for confession. See, sometimes we hurt our friends and relatives. Sometimes we do hurt ourselves. By doing so, knowingly or unknowingly, we hurt God. Our prayer of confession is a way to say, I am sorry. Friends, let us confess our, our sins, trusting in God's unfailing grace. Let us pray. Lord, we confess that we want you to affirm our self-importance. Forgive us, Holy One. We confess that we want our baptism to bless us, but not to change us. Forgive us, Holy One. We confess that sometimes we do not want to repent of our worldly ways. Forgive us, Holy One. We confess that sometimes we are so self-centered that we neglect those who are suffering around us. Forgive us, Holy One. Lead us from sand to rock, 
from things of this earth to things of your will. Amen. Let us take this time of silence to reflect upon the week that just passed, to voice or to just deeply say to the Lord those shortcomings that we didn't put in words here. And hear these words of assurance. Beloved in Christ, God the Creator, bring us a new life. Forgive and redeem us. Let us take hold of this forgiveness and live our life in the Spirit of Jesus. We are new creations in Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now, my friends, if you have uh, your family around you, I invite you to share the peace of Christ with them. May the peace of God be with you and with your family. Amen. Our first reading today is from Acts 1, 6 to 14. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them, men of Galilee. They said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back into the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the hill called Mount of Olives a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present, present were Peter, John, James, and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot and Judah's son of James. They all joined to together constantly in prayer along with the woman and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from 1 Peter 4, 12 to 14. And 5, 6 to 11. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering, as though something strange were happening to you, but rejoice that you participate in the sufferings of Christ, so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed, for the Spirit of Glory and God rest on you. Humble yourself, therefore, under God's mighty hand, 
that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Be controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of suffering. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading today is John 17, 1 to 11. After Jesus said this, he looked towards heaven and prayed, Father, the time has come. Glorify your Son that your Son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. I have revealed you to those whom you gave to me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are all yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine. And glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world. And I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me so that they may be one as we are one. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy One, we come to you this morning to hear from you. I pray that your Holy Spirit be upon me and upon your people, so that the meditation of my mind and my thoughts be acceptable unto thee. Amen. This morning, I title my reflection, May Day Be One. And this obviously is taken from the long prayer that Jesus said before he left them behind in John 17. Jesus knew that his people would go through trial and tribulation. They would go through suffering. And one thing that is very common to human beings is that when we are suffering, we tend to be self-centered. We, self, we, we have this attitude of looking inward, which is normal because it comes to a natural way of us to protect ourselves. But Jesus is saying to them that Maybe instead of being isolated, they better be together. They better be one. So because when you are one, you are stronger. I know uh, in Togo, back in Africa, uh, we use brooms uh, to, to sweep rooms. But brooms are made of very small pieces of little branches and then you have to put them together and use a roll to attach them 
by taking that all the small branches together are stronger because it's so difficult to break a broom made of small branches but it's so easy to break a small branch of a broom that's why we always give back in africa we always give an example of the broom as to the unity of the community because together we are stronger together we go through tribulations and suffering easier than if we try to go through one by one individually. And Jesus knew that. That why when he prayed for the unity, he didn't even only remind the disciple that he is in the Father. He is one with the Father. So as much as they are one, close together, he won't ask. He wants his disciple to be one, not only among the self to form a unity, a strong unity, but also by doing so, they will be in Christ and Christ will be in them and together they will be in the Father since Christ himself is already in the Father. Amen. So that's very important during this moment that we are going through tribulation and suffering due to COVID-19. It's easy to say that, oh, this is not my problem. This may be a problem of somebody else. I'm not sick, so why do I have to help? But if together, together we put our energy together, we help each other, we follow the rules together, we will go through this together and stronger. Last time, this was a very a funny situation that I went to take the boys to run in the park. And what I realized is that many people started gathering. And I look and Loic was saying to me, Dad, I know these people, they come from my school. They are not from the same family. And I said to him, you see, if we don't follow the rules together, sooner or later, we have to go back and to the confinement. Because if some people are breaking the rules, the virus will continue spreading. But if together we stay in, follow the rules, we'll go do, through this very easy. So the same prayer that Jesus did for his disciples in those circumstances of trial before he left, the same prayer I'm giving to you. Let us be one in this time of tribulation, in this time of confinement, to give time for the virus to go away. You know, when Jesus left this world, and that we hear it, in act that the disciples were amazed and they just stand there looking in the sky and two angels came and asked them what are you doing here standing here just looking in the sky it's like they didn't want to leave but they have a job to do. Jesus is gone. Now start the job. So we can say to ourselves, we are astonished by all this situation that's going on. And we can say to ourselves, I don't have to do anything. But as Christians, our faith is not a faith that sits and look around. Our faith is action. You know, you can find in the internet uh, the definition of faith, but one that I find very, uh, very uh, telling is they said faith is spell A C T I O N action. 
Christian faith is action. So we cannot stay around looking in the sky, waiting for Christ to come and say, yes, he said he's going to return. And then we'll wait for that time for Christ to come. No, that's not the way the Bible is interpreted. Our faith in the returning of Christ is we as disciples, we start working. Working to build, to bring the kingdom. We have to participate in the coming of the kingdom. So what are you doing? What are you doing? Are you standing around waiting for Christ to come? Are you staying around waiting for people to do the job? Are you staying around waiting for other people to proclaim the gospel? Are we staying around when your neighbors need help? Are you standing around when we can pick up the phone and call somebody and give us, give them just a little time to chat? Are you standing around when you have a lot of talent, a lot of talent that you can spread and bring joy into people's life? The angels asked the disciples, what are you doing standing around? So imagine if all of us, if all of us start working together. Remember, Jesus said, may they be one. We start working together, we will achieve great things. Then the question is, the question is, what are we working for together? Theologically, we're working toward bringing the kingdom down. But how that is done practically? I always believe that everything had to be interpreted according to the time. So right now, at this moment, the suffering and the challenges that we are facing is COVID-19. Some students are not going back to school. Some of our kids cannot graduate. Those who want to have their end of year graduation party will not have it. Can we call them and consult them? Our teachers are struggling. Our nurses and doctors are struggling. Some military members who are sent to help in our nursing home are getting sick. Frontline people are getting sick. If you know somebody, if you know somebody, if you cannot call them, do something to show your appreciation to them. That will warm their hearts. If together we can do and reach out to one or two people, imagine how many people will reach. That's our challenge. That's the time. That where Christ is calling us now to be one. If you cannot do that, pray for those people. Pray that the Lord may keep them safe. Pray for those who are working hard in the front line. Pray for those who are in our nursing homes. May the Lord who said to his church, may they be one, help us. And my friends, behold, do not stand looking in the sky, waiting for the return of Christ. Remember, remember, faith is spelled action. May God bless you. May he give you the opportunity and the strength to stand and to spread your wings with your talents. 
Amen. Friends, let us pray. Gracious God, we pray for this opportunity you gave us to hear your words. Saying to us that we have to be active. That our faith has to translate into actions. We hear your words of the unity of the church. Help us to be united. We pray for the faithful all over the world that all who love you may be united in your service. We pray for the church in Quebec with all those who are rich are reaching out. We pray, O oh Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for the peoples and leaders of our nation and all nations that they may be reconciled, they may be one looking for the betterness of the world in pursuit of your justice and peace. We pray for all who suffer from prejudices, greed, or violence, that the hearts of humanity may warm with your tenderness. We pray especially for our friends, our mothers, our fathers, our grandfathers, our grandmothers, all our relatives who are in nursing homes, we pray for our prisoners, those who have nowhere to go, for those who are homeless but not hopeless. We pray for our refugees. In refugee camps at this moment who don't know and who are not protected properly from COVID-19. God, hear our prayer. And in your love, answer them. We pray for all in need. By reason of famine, flood, or earthquake, that they may know your hope, your faithfulness, of your faithfulness through the help of others. Lord, take care of our front line workers, essential workers, protect them, protect their families. I pray for all the military who are deployed in nursing homes in Quebec and Ontario. Lord, be with them. We bring all our prayer that we have in our hearts the one that we didn't voice to you, but you know us, you search us. You know the corner for all our being and soul and our mind. That's why for all the unspoken prayers, we bring them to you in the prayer that you taught us as we say together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. My friends, our Last hymn is uh, taken from Voices United 402-402, We Are One.
Christ. We are almost at the end of our service uh, this morning. I just want to say thank you for those who participate into this service, bringing their talent of music and technology to us. Uh, I just want to remind you of an important date, which is uh, next Saturday, the, uh, the 30th. May the 30th, we're going to have our annual meeting. It's an important day, annual meeting uh, uh, with uh, Zoom. So if uh, you haven't marked these dates on your calendar yet, uh, make sure that you, you mark it and then you find a way to join us uh, in this meeting. Let us uh, receive our blessing. And the glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I'm coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one, as we are one. God the sender, send us. God the saints, Come with us. God is strengthener. Empower us that we may go with you and find those who will call you Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. May God bless you and keep you until we meet again. Go in peace. Amen.